Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel dashboards. All right, in our last Friday challenge, we posted uh, this question. If I had this amount of data here, um, it is data A through L. If I have another column, or how can I conditionally show these data points? Let's say I don't want to show A through L. I just want to show four data points. C, E, let's go ahead and type in a yes here on G. Um, and K, and look at that, G was added to the chart. So I can come in here and delete G, and G goes away from the chart based on uh, the data I want to pick to show. So how can we go about doing that? Well, let's uh, get into this. Now, you can download the sample file um, from uh, my blog at excel-dashboardtemplates.com. I also have some other great posts out there from uh, several of our fans who did it slightly differently. Uh, using either different formulas, slightly different techniques, but uh, all getting the same results. So check those out. Download them and see if you can understand uh, how they were creating those as well. Um, all right, so we have our data set up. We've got uh, a column of data and a column of categories. We're going to create another column called show, and here we're going to type in a yes or just leave it blank um, if we do not want to show the data point. Um, so what I did is I wanted to create a unique value over here in another data area um, where this is going to show uh, that we want to show this data point or not. So what I just did is I typed in a, sync, a very simple if statement. And so that was if C2 equals, and we're just going to make that equal to a quotes yes, um, then we want to show the row that we're in else we just want to show blank and we don't want to show anything at all so um, as you can see there's nothing in uh, row 2 but if I copy this down we're going to see various uh, data points here we're going to see row 4 row 6 and row 12 this gives me a unique identifier and I'm going to use that in my next formula of my next column uh, to determine um, and actually show only C E and K as our data points Okay, now that we have identified the row that our data lives in, what we want to do is create an index formula over here in column F. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do equals index. Now what index does is from this array, and our array, we are going to start this in A1 and go all the way down to A13. I'm going to hit F4 to lock that in. So I'm going to return something from this range. And what I want to do is I want to return the row number of my first number. So in this case, it's 4, which is over here in this column. But the way I determine what is the number that I want, the first one is the smallest, right? 4, 6, 12. So I'm going to do small. And I'm going to pick an array. And once again, my array is our range of data in here in column E. I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down so it doesn't move. And I want to grab the smallest one. Well, if I type in one, it's only going to grab the first smallest, and then I have to change every single formula. So I'm going to make this automatic by putting in a counter. And my counter is I'm going to use the row of F1. And since I'm not locking this down, this is a relative reference. As I copy it down, it's going to be F2, F3, F4. And the row of those is basically going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. We can go ahead and uh, end our parentheses there for the small. Now, um, our index, this array, is only one column. It's column A. Therefore, I've only got one column. I'm just, that's the number of column I want to return for my intersection. So I can end my index formula, hit enter, and look at that. C is now showing up uh, in there. And if I copy this down, um, you'll see C, E, and K. That's what I have, C, E, and K. Um, now, you see I've got this number error popping up in here. So what I want to do is I want to come in and wrap this formula in an if error. So I'm just going to edit the formula up here in the formula bar, and I'm going to type in if error, hit tab. Now, if error, I'm going to wrap this entire thing, and if this entire index formula is an error, then I want to just return double quotes for a blank. Let's go ahead and hit enter there and then copy that down. Now you'll see all of these are just going to be blank. Um, all right, so uh, the next step is this is, I'm just going to copy this entire formula here and I'm going to come over into cell G2 
and paste it into the formula bar. Now, I don't want to uh, reference the column A anymore. Um, I actually want my data values. Instead of my categories, I want my data values. I'm just going to move that over and hit Enter. And you can see 359.85, that is actually what is for C. If I copy that down, 658.24, that is what's for K. So it looks like we've got our data set right. So uh, we have now created our um, data range. However, if I chart this and I chart all of these blanks, I'm just going to get um, a horribly bad chart. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. It's not really what I'm looking for. Um, look at this. What Excel does is it says, hey, all those blanks, I'm going to leave them in here as space because you just don't have any category labels and no data points. No way to really hide those. Um, I want to use an offset formula for this. All right, so uh, what we need to do to create a dynamic chart from this data series is create some defined names, one for the categories and two for our chart data. So let's go in and uh, go over to your formula ribbon. And then in your formula ribbon, you can go right into define name. And here we want to define a name called, uh, let's call it chart data. And let's just go ahead and get rid of that reference. And so what we're going to say is this is equal to an offset function. And we want to start our offset function for the chart data in cell G2. Now, the next part of our offset says, how many rows do we want to go down? We don't want to go down any rows. Um, and then the next part of it is, uh, how many columns do you want to move over? We don't want to move any columns. And then it says, how many rows do you want to return? Well, if we look at our data in G, chart data is text, and these three are numbers, and there's no other numbers. So if I do a count of my entire G column, uh, I can get how many rows there are. That should return three rows. And since we only have one column of data, I'm going to just return one column's worth. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight all of this and do a Control C to copy. So chart data. Let's go ahead and click on OK. Let's go back to our formula bar, our ribbon. Let's go to the Define Name button. And this one we want to do is Chart Categories. And uh, let's go ahead and equal to that offset formula again. And then instead of uh, starting in cell G2, what we want to do is we just want to start that in cell F2. And we're good there. So now we've created our data series that we're going to create our dynamic chart from. So what I recommend doing is just go out anywhere into a blank area with nothing around it at all and go up to your insert ribbon. We're going to create the chart. And we're just going to create a blank column chart. And we're going to do a 2D column chart. So as you can see, it is completely blank. Now if I go to my design ribbon and I go to the data group and I hit select data, um, this is where I want to add those defined names that we just created. OK, so then what we want to do is we want to add our data series by clicking on this Add button. And this is going to be our chart data. And I'm going to come in here to the series value and just delete it. I'm going to select any cell on my worksheet. And you see it puts in equals, single quotes, my worksheet name, and this exclamation point. If I get rid of this cell reference and type in chart data, which is my named range, click on OK, you will see um, it's actually put in my chart data there. Uh, it's just missing the references to my horizontal axis labels. It's got one, two, and three, and that's because we created a separate named range for that one. So let's just go ahead and click on the access labels here for the horizontal axis. Once again, I'm just going to go select a cell. I'm going to delete the cell reference next to the exclamation point. I'm going to type in chart categories and click on OK. Got to click on OK again, or Excel will get rid of my changes. And look at that. We've got C, E, and K with their different data set based on these two dynamic um, ranges over here. Let's go ahead and add in yeah, yes on A. A is now going to be in our list. Let's go ahead and add in a um, yes on G. And G is now added. Uh, so it'll just keep going. And we can just continue to delete or add anything that we like. And it will continue to modify the chart as needed. So um, hopefully you found this helpful to create your own dynamic data series within Excel to plot specific points of charts of your uh, data points of your choosing uh, in your Excel spreadsheet. Uh, once again, this is Steve equals true. Please visit my blog at Excel dashboard templates.com where you sure learn the
best posts and techniques and you can also download all the sample files for this challenge and I uh, hope to see you soon.